Donald and I uh, just discussed that I will be leading up to the really provoking uh, words by uh, Kurt. Um, it's a really a pleasure to be here and to be invited uh, to, to speak very uh, shortly on this day uh, that we start uh, with the Knowledge Equity Network. And um, so who am I? I'm, as uh, was introduced, uh, currently the Director of um, Student Education Affairs at the Freie Universiteit. And I've, perhaps you read that in the program, I have also spent some time at a scientific publisher. I worked at Elsevier. here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a bit provocative anyway. Then. And I also worked at the library, at the TU Delft uh, Library. So I've been working on open access and open science for quite some, some time. Um, and but what's my connection and why I'm invited here on this topic, uh, reward and recognition for an open culture, uh, is that at the time I was uh, working in Delft, I've Perhaps you know, six years ago, um, it's a long time actually, if I think about it, uh, there was a congress on open science in Amsterdam, and then we had the Amsterdam call for action. And then there were council conclusions, and every member state was asked to write or to make a national plan. And then I was asked, I was involved in that, uh, in that congress, I was asked by the Ministry of Education, Culture and Sciences to, to write that national plan, open science for the Netherlands. So I have, and actually I had a few slides. So I have uh, written the first, um, as a main author, of course, uh, not on my own, the first national plan open science for the Netherlands 2017 and 2020. And now here you see actually we just launched the next, the second national plan, and with the same pillars that we already had in uh, 2017. It's about what we then call citizen science. It's about open access, open scholarly communication, fair, open research data, and transparent scientific processes. And here, of course, you see the vertical here is recognition and, 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 and rewards. So what I bring to the table, two things. And actually, it's perhaps also more focusing on the why and understand before two o'clock, we need to have the three actions. But I think it's so essential to stimulate in every sense of the way, people to be as open as possible. And I also think, and it was also said this earlier this morning, that it's essential that we have institutional leaders, institutional leadership that um, have a fair and consistent way in reward and recognition. So those are the two things that I wanted to say today. And I end up with some examples from the Netherlands. So I will become a bit more uh, uh, concrete. Um, so I talked about my uh, connection, the Amsterdam call for action. And then afterwards, I also was, when I was library director, I was also program manager open access for the Netherlands, for the <coughs> University of the Netherlands, and then leading the, 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 the open scholarly communication uh, um, thread. And I did the first transformative agreement with Springer, the compact agreement. So that's, 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 that's the way of my, of my background. And I think research of recognition and rewards are very connected to open science. And that we want in one way really to stimulate our students, our teachers, our, re our researchers to be as open as possible. But it's also an opportunity to see science and research in a different perspective. And I want to, I have, I'm not going to read this, but just a part of it, because I read over summer a book from Frank Minema. You might know him, heard of him. He's at the University of Utrecht, now really into open science there, but he was the dean of the medical faculty. And he wrote a book on open science. It's called Open Science, the very idea. I would really recommend uh, you to read it. And there's just a few lines that I would like to read out of this book. And he says, one of the major, still current problems is that although there might be a generally felt frustration by the majority of scientists in academia, the academic leadership does not immediately recognize, flatly denies or rebuts, but this is how science is. When issues are discussed, it, has, is, it is at this management level and not in the daily environment of researchers where a change is needed. 
So Minima really makes a plea for a pragmatic theory of scientific inquiry that is open, non-dogmatic, and pluralistic, inclusive, and contextual. When scientific research is really seen as a means to an end, and with the ultimate aim to address and alleviate problems and issues that prevent people from having their good life, from living the good life, and to achieve reliable knowledge. So therefore, and it was said earlier on also, science must constantly engage with the public. Um, policy issues, like you also just uh, uh, explained, Simone, in the panel, get a very different, more practical context if uh, representatives from the public that are <coughs> concerned and are affected are involved. And there the turn to open science is, is actually made, because opening up of science uh, should ideally promote equality, inclusion, and diversity of our research agendas. And this requires an, an open society, an open culture, where um, you have a place for debate. That was also mentioned earlier. Where uh, there is a safe place, and there is a diversity of publics, and working on this, working on this open society, working on this open culture, that should be rewarded and recognized. So I promised also a few examples. Um, so going back to recognition and rewards and um, the way we are dealing with it currently at the Netherlands, this is, a, I thought, a very nice overview of what it is if you talk about open science. I took it from my previous uh, working place, the TU Delft. Um, here the contact, Esther Plomp. Uh, and there you see, there is so much. It's, uh, it, it doesn't say actually open culture anywhere here in these bubbles, but it does say <coughs> open, sorry, open participation, uh, open engagement open education. So I think this is a, is a whole ecosystem of things that we all uh, could uh, let fall under open science. And then we also would want people, we want to stimulate people working on that. Then the next, it's an empty slide. Oh, I think it belts up. Ah, oh, wait, 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 wait. So this is, um, so every um, university in the Netherlands is working on the pillars of, of, of the national plan uh, open science. And this is just an example of what my current university, the Vrije University, is doing on recognition and rewards. Talking about leadership, so my uh, uh, rector, we call it in, uh, in Dutch, uh, Jeroen Geurts, is taking leadership here on this topic, recognition and rewards, working on research assessment, um, on a teacher framework, um, we're having a lot of debates, uh, workshops, sharing uh, good practices. Um, and, and, and one of the things uh, that helps is, is credit. I think it's too much to go through, but just an example of what we are doing at the FU. And another of the universities that are very active in the Netherlands on the topic of recognition and rewards, and I thought, I thought especially this slide is interesting to see, is the uh, Utrecht University. And there, it's, as I mentioned, Frank Minema, eh, who is from Utrecht. And there you see how we want to move from the past to the future, from a very uh, science-focused on the individual performance, science-focused on, on quantity. And we want to take that to a future where you have dynamic career paths, where the outcome is based on, on narratives and social engagement. And um, it's, it's all based on team effort. So what I said, and I, I think I should stop and give the floor to, to Kurt, is what I said, I think it's, it's, it's so important that we stimulate stu students, teachers, and re researchers to be as open as possible, and we should discuss if we have good practices here, how we can act upon that. And we need these <coughs> institutional leaders on the top, but also mid middle management leaders that will help us achieving that. So, thank you. Wilma, thank you very much indeed. <laughs>